Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 10 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am just having a little bit of fun uh, cooking up some cobalt. Yep, that's right. Uh, thrown into the smelter here. Actually, come to think of it, I should probably uh, fill up my setup here. Let's see. Where's my drum? There you are. Come here, drum. I need to borrow you for a minute. How are you for lava, by the way? Oh, not bad. Definitely used a significant portion of it, but not too bad. Um, need to... Let's see, do I have any more fluid ducts? Probably. I have to remember where my stuff is now. Uh, they would probably... I would expect them to be in here, but I guess I'm not seeing them. Did I use... Oh, wait, these are them, right? Pressurized fluid conduits. Nice. All right, let's head outside and hook those in because I'm assuming now that I am out of lava and I'm going to want to, you know, hook that in. So, do I have my Yetta wrench on me? I do. We're going to set this side. Actually, it's the upside here that we want to set to extract. Always active. Nice. So that should allow this stuff to start cooking. And then I'm going to throw these guys in there uh, because I want more manulin. So uh, between last episode and next, I've done a little bit of hunting outside. As you guys know, we wrapped up at the end of the last episode with a pretty basic sorting system. Uh, unfortunately, we're a little bit stuck right now. And the holding up uh, of this, finishing up of this sorting system is zombie skulls or heads, right? So I've collected one and I've been killing with the ender. And I've got one. I've got a lot of creeper and skeleton skulls, no problem, as you can see. But the ones that I'm after, zombie heads, not having a ton of luck with that. So, with that said, I am clearly going to do something related to, you guessed it, uh, tinkers. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead here and show you guys what I want to make. And I'll put, this can go into my metals chest, that's fine. And I might even go ahead and update the snapshot. Nice, so now cobalt will go in there as well. Uh, so Tinker should be pretty much ready for me. I've got my cobblestone. I think I've got everything I need. Uh, let's get a stencil table here going. You, I would like this thing. This is the large blade pattern. And as we've seen already with most of the Tinker's tools, um, you know, you can go ahead and do all kinds of cool stuff, right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the large blade pattern, which, by the way, is also an eight cost. Um, so we want to do that. And I want to build around it. So let's make sure our aluminum brass is on the bottom there. Cool. And I'm also going to need a plate cast. And while I'm at it, a tough rod cast. Okay. Uh, so we'll scoop that up and we'll see. Uh, even know, aluminum brass might be where I want to make my tough rods. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, point is, I've got cobalt now and I've got 16 ingots worth of cobalt. That's exactly what I need. And uh, to make the sword that I want, we're going to need... Uh, I want to make the cleaver here. So that's going to need that large, um, you know, blade cast. And it's also going to need this guy. Cool. So we'll fill that up with manulin, and that'll get us a pretty nice sword. As we know, manulin is the best damage available uh, for any sword that you're making. So that's taking care of that. And then for the uh, handle on the blade, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I'm not terribly worried about the handle right now. What did I make this one out of? Manulin? Eh, I don't think I've got enough manulin for a handle. I could go aluminum brass. I don't think aluminum brass is a bad handle type, but maybe I should just be safe and check. I'm just going to grab it because that's what happens to be in there. Oh, we've already had some of this in here. Cool. I'm going to actually throw this in here and re-grab the snapshot. If you're if you're close, you can sneak in between um, the blocks there. I just love the fact that it automatically hides the facades when you have that in your hand. That is so cool. All right. So materials in new volume two. I think that's where I'll be able to find how aluminum brass works as a material type. All right, I'd, apparently it, you can't even use that. Or am I crazy? Copper, steel, bronze, I don't know. How about Ardite? I think Ardite's a pretty good. Gives you a handle modifier of 2x. That works for me. It also gives you the stonebound trait, which is a nice trait to have uh, for mining, but not really the best to have for uh, anything else. Um, I could go reinforced with cobalt. That might not be terrible either. You know what? I'll go obsidian. I think that has a pretty good... 0.8x modifier? Eh, let me figure it out what I want to do. You know what doesn't have a bad uh, number to go with here is bronze. 
So I'm going to throw 10 of these bronze in there. So bronze is really just a combination of copper and tin, and you can make it in a crafting table if you want. So you can see three copper and one tin. There's a bunch of other ways to make it as well. Uh, but let me cook that up real quick, and then we'll have bronze. Uh, the material trait for that, by the way, not terrible. Uh, let's see, bronze. You get reinforced one, and you get a 1.3x modifier. So, yeah, not too bad. All right, while that's cooking, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so the reason I'm making the cleaver from Tinker's Construct uh, is twofold. Number one, uh, and we'll come over here to the part builder thing, the cleaver has an inherent ability to use such powerful strikes that its special built-in ability is beheading, which means you have a higher chance of getting, um, you know, mob heads. Uh, so what I need is the two bronze, I need this guy and that guy, and we'll call it the beheader. Uh, this is actually going to be useful later on when I want to go hunting after wither skeleton skulls. So since I'm going to have to make it anyway, might as well make it now. Uh, now what's cool is there's a bunch of upgrades we could apply here. For example, I could have put the quartz on like I did with the sword to get more sharpness, right? Well, instead of doing that, I'm going to add obsidian and ender pearls. And for each level of that, we get a beheading modifier, which gives us an even better chance of beheading. So you'll see now I've got beheading two going on here. I could probably throw a third on there for an even better chance, but I'm going to see how two does because honestly I don't have a ton of ender pearls and obsidian just yet. So I guess I'm going to have to wait till nighttime and we're going to see what kind of hunting I can do with the beheader. Now the only downside to this is you do get mining fatigue from it. So you don't get slowed down by walking around, but you can't swing your weapon as quickly because it's such a big sword, right? So this giant sword, it takes longer to swing. So don't expect to get, you know, a ton of damage going on there. It's not bad, but it's definitely slower than any other sword. So you have to be a little bit careful. Definitely have something else in your inventory ready to go uh, to kill anything that you don't need the heads of. All right, so like I said, this will be good for wither skeletons later, but hopefully it'll help me with my zombie head situation right now. Um, and if that's the case, then we can wrap up our sorting system in time for episode 10's download. So as you guys know, uh, anybody who's been a fan of the series before, every 10 episodes, I make a backup of my world at the end of the episode and give it to you guys. So you can download it, you can play in my world and use some of the crazy contraptions I've built. I haven't built too many crazy contraptions yet, but I've got a sorting system here pretty much that should be ready by the end of the episode episode and you guys can play around with that so i'll clean up my inventory looks like it's getting dark i'll be back in just a minute or two once the sun sets and uh we can go hunting for some zombies at night all right guys the sun is setting and now we go hunting here zombies where you at i see monsters first a couple of tele creeper things i hate them there we go you zombie come here all right, the first zombie I killed, I got a skull. I kind of feel like that's a win. <laughs> I am really hoping that that is uh, indicative of the zombie heads to come. Uh, let's see, anything sneak around behind my house? It just turned dark, so it's probably not allowed out here yet. Skeletons and spiders, I don't care about your head situation. Uh, Enderman heads I do need, so if I do see any of them, I might do a finishing blow with this. Uh, remember, it's the finishing blow that counts, so if you want to weaken them with this sword, this sword will one-shot some things, uh, but if you want to finish them off, you know, there's nothing saying you can't. Wow, that is a large blue slime. I'm going to kill it because the blue slime stuff can actually be pretty useful. Ouch. Enchanted bow. Not cool. And you're ruining my farm. Bad slime. All right, let's see. Any more zombies out here for the time being, or should I come back in a second? Uh, is that one? That looks like a zombie. All right, guys, cross your fingers. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I've got four zombies. I think that zombie dropped two heads. <laughs> I think uh, beheading two might give it, I guess, the opportunity to drop a second. All right, I'm getting out of here. That skeleton's going to kill me. Oh, those two skeletons are going to kill me. I'm going to go inside, regen my health. I'm going to do more hunting. The beheading cleaver that I just made is clearly superior uh, to the ender, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, because the ender I'm still planning to use, I think, down the line. Because there's once I upgrade it, which requires a lot of RF-related stuff... Actually, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want to sleep yet. I do want to hunt for some more skulls. I'm going to hunt for them off camera, so I will be back. Peeking around outside. See you guys in just a minute. Ah, spider. 
All right, guys, I did pretty good. I actually wound up with about a dozen zombie heads by the end of the night. I'm uh, cooking them all up right now into these awesome things, and I'm actually out of soul sand, so <laughs> now I have to do the nether, go to the nether and uh, get myself a little bit more soul sand, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to have five more zombie controllers here. I'm going to real quick uh, kind of finish off my system. So let's see. Got some ender conduits. I might want a few more of these. Let's snag three of these and uh, six of these. Just make ourselves a few more ender conduits. And if I have to get another one of those ender nugget things, I can. But there we go. That should be cool. I don't have any more of these, right? Uh, while I'm at it, I wanted to make another bunch of these just to have them ready. So let's get them painted. There we go. Zombie controllers are ready. Uh, let's get our sugar cane and I think they involve what now? Redstone. Okay, I have plenty of that in my inventory, so I should be good. So let's just turn a bunch of sugar cane into paper. Yeah, cool. And then these guys can become this for me. Awesome. So now I've got the advanced item filter, which will eventually upgrade to the redstone comparator. I just need to make sure I have smooth stone and I need a little bit more wood. Four sticks. So let's see, I have uh, five of these and I need three, four, so this should be perfect. So usable recipe. All right, I need another stuff. Usable for you, and then, right, there we go, and then you can upgrade to that, cool. I have an extra comparator, no big deal. And you can go into miscellaneous junk for me. So let's see, where are we at with uh, getting this thing taken care of? And I'm going to go into my ender mini form, because that is just going to make things easier. So I'll definitely tap into here. Oh, nice. When you hold one of the conduits, you also see that. That's cool. Uh, so we'll just go in here. We'll say existing item filter. We'll do a current snapshot. We can see everything that's currently in there. Now, if I wanted to, and which I will probably eventually do, instead of using the existing item filter, I'll probably wind up going with eventually a mod item filter, which just requires, actually, that's not too expensive at all. Uh, that'll save me some trouble. I will probably eventually break this up so that I'll have some mods in this chest, other mod items in this chest, maybe more we'll see uh, how things work out but what I can do then is just use the mod item filter and what that'll allow me to do is say any items that match in terms of the mods like the same mod right so terrain smashers from thermal expansion that would mean any thermal expansion stuff would get routed here as a priority cool uh, so this is all filled in that's good uh, let's go down here I would probably like to get these guys taken care of so let's do that real quick so we'll hook into this and this and as a result we won't need this anymore and then we will say you are a existing item filter and we'll snapshot that and you are an existing item filter and we'll snapshot that cool so these guys should all filter correctly and there we go. And I'll have some facades for that in a minute. Anything else that needs to be filtered? I think this thing could be. I want to do this one, right? Uh, that chest there, existing item filter, snapshot show. So if I'm correct, every um, chest now has an item filter on it, right? So one, all these chests do, all these chests do, and all those items. And then all I have to do is cover this hole up and snag my conduit facades. And we should be in good shape. So like that, nice. Aren't these facades cool? All right, that's a fully functional sorting system at this point, guys. I have an extra existing item filter. Like I said, I'll probably wind up going with mod item filters in a bit, but for now, this will suffice for sure. Um, let's, you wanna say, give it a try? And you are filtered, right? Yeah, you're good, cool. All right, so if I just went to, for example, and just 
dumped all my inventory in here, it should figure out what to do with everything for the most part. Some things would probably go to the miscellaneous junk chest, but what you want to do to make sure that your item filter stuff is working is probably, uh, you know, after everything's sorted, so you can see things are sorting pretty quickly there. Not bad. And we could, like I said, get the conduit speed upgrade if we were concerned about how fast it was moving. So anything that lands into this chest isn't sorted. So that's basically this stuff. Glass? I didn't have glass in here. I do. So why didn't you sort appropriately? Oh, right. Insert mode. Ha! Told you guys I forgot about that. Uh, let's get this out of here. And we'll insert mode here. Whoops. I told you I am totally used to the fact that insert mode is the default on most other piping systems that I forget to change it from extract to insert. So that's the only one I did there. This is already an insert mode. Uh, this one, insert mode. So the only other two were this one needs to go to insert. And this one needs to go to insert mode. I bet half you guys noticed that and were laughing at me. It's okay. So let's take all this stuff out of here. As a matter of fact, I do want to make sure that this thing knows that conduits and facades belong in here. That it already does. And this stuff should be already in there. Cool. And you can have, good, the cobblestone's in there already. Nice. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's try that again. One thing real quick, don't forget to re-snapshot after you add stuff like the under conduit. So we'll put all this stuff in here. Some of these now should wind up in their appropriate places and others will land, um, you know, in the miscellaneous junk chest. And basically what you should count on is some things landing in here and you should come in here every now and then and be like, all right, are the things in here belong anywhere else, right? So redstone torch, that's fine. The diervator, that's fine, right? So all the stuff that landed in here, that's fine. But other things like, you know, the item conduit showed up in its appropriate space and all that stuff. Uh, you can see the conduit facades landed there. Nice. Speaking of, I want to go tidy up the outside of my base a little bit. So I think we have, in my opinion, a fully functional sorting system at this point. Nice. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute then. All right, guys, let's be crazy. I just want to try out this mod item thing because what that'll mean is that it doesn't matter what's in there right now, anything from Ender.io or, oh, I don't want Minecraft related stuff in here actually, so we can get that stuff out. Uh, let's see, I don't think anything else is Minecraft related because then any vanilla items would land in here too and I don't necessarily want that. These things can actually probably go over here. Uh, so mod related is what I'm gonna do here, so. If we change out the existing item filter, which I'm going to clear, by the way, there we go. And then we come in here and we say mod item filter. Uh, that only gives me three lines, huh? That stinks. So it won't do a similar thing like a snapshot. Um, well, I do have a lot of Ender IO and extra utilities. The way this works is you can do, you just snag a couple items here. And what else do we got? Open blocks. Tinkers. See, there's a lot of mod related stuff. I would want more than just three in this chest. But the way this works is you go ahead and just drop this in like that and then hit the minus sign to delete it. So you can see anything extra utilities or ender IO would land here, regardless of whether or not they're already in the chest. So for example, my survivalist generators, they're not existing in there already. I throw them in and they should make their way over. See? So, I mean, an, another method, obviously, is to have a second conduit on the back here with yet another filter on it. But man, only three mod listings? That stinks. All right, give me a minute, I'll think. All right, guys, what I decided is to go with what I said I could do before, which is just have another one of these guys here like this, and then we just simply say insert mode. <laughs> Look at that, I remember this time. And then we just do the mod filter again, right? So we should have no problem with that. All right, and then I can throw a facade on there real quick. Nice. Uh, so now, let's see. So my other options were, so I had Tinker's Construct in here, right? We have Ender.io, 
Uh, we have Java. I'm not going to worry about that one for now. Extra utilities, Ender IO. Those two are covered already. Open blocks. Sure, why not? We'll do open block stuff can go in here and Tinker's stuff can go in here. And thermal expansion stuff can go in here. And yeah, why not? Factorization. That sounds fine. Okay. So in order for this to work, we have this guy set for factorization. And then this guy can be thermal expansion, Tinker's construct, and open blocks. Cool. So now these things should all sort appropriately. Factorization. So I just have one little question for us. Let's see. Electrical steel, is that in here as well? Probably not. But if it was, right, because it is kind of a metal, and I did a snapshot, and then I came over here and just clicked on the conduit to say, hey, where are you going to go? Which, oh, I can't do that while it's hidden. Interesting. Okay, good. It's easy to break. So when I just click on this thing, for example, you can see, uh, obviously, the better barrels are possible destinations, uh, but also there's three iron blocks, right? It could go into the metals chest because it's an electrical steel match, and it could also go into uh, the 1501, which is probably this guy, right? 1501 is right here because it's an ender IO match. So in this case, it'll uh, wind up going to the closest one, which for now is fine because it's the metals chest. I'll leave that as is, but keep that in mind. You might want to set your um, the ones that are existing item filters with a higher priority than ones that are mod item filters. So that way, if it matches both, it'll go to the higher priority one, which would be the existing item filter. Cool. All right, guys, there's one more thing that will make our sorting system complete. That's going to be a chest with some cobble and some smooth stone. It's a trash can. This is a mod uh, item from Extra Utilities, and it's awesome. Basically, what it does is it acts exactly like it sounds as a trash can. Uh, but I don't want any old item floating into there. Absolutely not. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that only specific items make their way into the trash can. So uh, I went ahead and got myself an advanced item filter. Took a little quick trip to the nether just to get myself uh, situated. We're going to throw this in here. Uh, we can throw the cover back on in a minute. Or we'll do a facade now real quick. Last one I got anyway. There we go. And let's go through digging uh, through this chest and figure out what I might not want to keep. So I don't care about swords. I don't care about shovels or axes or pretty much any of this. Uh, so this is the typical stuff that you get junk-wise. The golden leggings I might be able to do something with. So I'll hang on to those. We'll see if I start to get like an overflow of that junk. It's really the crossbows that you usually wind up with a ton of. So let's see here. Um, oh, this smooth stone and dirt, actually, you don't belong in here. We'll resort this. And everything else is kind of okay, I think. Yeah, that looks good. So if we resort the smooth stone and dirt, it should go where it belongs. And into the advanced item filter, I'm going to throw the bow. Now what's important is we want to ignore metadata because different bows from skeletons have different metadata. You can see this has a durability of 110, 53, 25. If we were telling it to match metadata, only bows at this exact damage level, uh, you can see the metadata is the number after the item ID, so it's 359 here. Um, only items that match exactly would be allowed in here. So this is 331, so it wouldn't match. This is 274, so it wouldn't match. So we're gonna say ignore metadata. Now all bows, even if they're fully repaired, will land in here. The only thing I'm gonna tell it to do is match NBT data. If we ignore NBT data, all bows, regardless of their enchant, would land in here. But if we tell it to match, it should only allow unenchanted bows into this thing. Now I know we also happen to get shovels and, hey there buddy, how's it going? little sniper. Um, let's see, I can get around the corner here. Uh, leather caps, for example. Um, I think stone axe. I'm pretty sure the wood axe and the wood stuff is just from when I was playing around, and I don't think we'll get stone hose either, so we'll leave that. Um, I'll do stone swords, because I know we can occasionally get them from things like wither skeletons, just so that the system's all ready to sort, okay? So if we came over to here, and we asked this thing, for example, where it's going to send my bow, you can see um, 
items will be inserted into the better barrels or iron block. It should also be listing... Let's see. It should have listed the trash can. I'm surprised it didn't. Uh, yeah, it's only doing the better barrels and then the iron block. Strange. This thing is hooked up in here and ready to go. Oh, right. I know. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. One of these days, guys, I promise I will definitely figure that out. So ignore metadata, match NBT, whitelist, or dictionary disable. Um, now trash can uh, comes before the block over there. The better barrel is always going to be listed because we don't have a filter on it. If I put a filter on it, it would prevent this, but it's really not necessary because the better barrel can only accept one of each item type, which by the way, I forgot I should show you. Shift right click. Um, I showed you that with the cobblestone one. Don't forget to lock these so that if you do use all the sand, it'll still only accept sand. All right, cool. So other things that it doesn't know what to do with, for example, the Yetta wrench or uh, let's say torches. I don't think it'll know what to do with torches. Uh, torches will not be allowed in the trash can. Only things like bows will be allowed in the trash can. Cool. So if we resort all this stuff, uh, we should be in pretty good shape. Cool. And I'll put the facade back down. Uh, I guess this, this. Yeah, that matched. No, it doesn't match. What did I do wrong here? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Oh, I put... This is what I get for using similar textured items for walls and floors. Okay, just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of the trash can and how that works. So we should not have gotten any of those items in here. Awesome. I'll clean out these last couple bows. That should clean that out. They shouldn't go in there. Let's just make sure. They are landing in there. I wonder why. Maybe they have some kind of NBT attached to them. Hmm. Oh well, I'll trash them manually and we'll see going forward what happens. Obviously most of the bows landed in there. They weren't enchanted, so the only thing I can imagine is they have some kind of NBT data attached. I don't have any idea what it would be though, because, you know, I'm a little fuzzy on that kind of thing anyway. All right, guys, one more trick to show you, and then I think we've pretty much gotten close to the point where we're going to wrap up the episode. When you have uh, something like redstone dust or anything in one of these miners' backpacks, if you shift right-click the backpack onto a chest, everything that's inside of it will land inside the chest and will be allowed to be automatically sorted. So what I'm going to do now is go do a little bit of mining uh, between this episode and next, and then I'm also going to back up the world so that you guys have the world download available to you. Uh, so as I go mine here, I should, for example, I'm just going to snag a few ores real quick so you can see what all happens here. That might be a new type of gem, so it might need to be added to our sorting system, but that's no big deal. Uh, usually I have this guy here. Nice. Uh, anything else that might be useful for me? This is kind of a mining cave that I started going down. And I'll add to it later, of course, but let's go this way. Just want to real quick make my way through this place and get some good stuff. There we go, some coal, some iron, that's what I'm talking about. Collect it all up. And you'll notice, of course, because I have this awesome backpack, none of my stuff is going into my inventory, at least until the backpack fills up. Um, it all goes into the appropriate bags, which is awesome when you're mining tons and tons of stuff like this. At some point, I'll make an even cooler item for all this cobblestone I'm collecting, but honestly, I could kind of use the cobblestone right now. So soon, maybe I'll build a cobblestone generator, and then I can show you guys another nifty item. All right, nothing new there. Like I said, technically, for things like coal, you should be using the pick that I made, but it's not that big a deal for coal for me. If it were diamonds, I would absolutely be using the pick, but for coal, I'm not worried about it. All right, let's head back home and see what happens when we auto sort this stuff. So all I should have to do then is uh, shift right click my two bags onto the chest. So watch, heading back upstairs and go. So the miner's bag, for example, everything gets sorted appropriately. And if we head downstairs, we should see the backlog to-do list of things getting smelted. Awesome, look at that. There's the silver and iron ore. It's all getting taken care of. The lead ore is being processed. The cobblestone is gonna be cooked up. That's fine, I don't mind smooth stone being created. And then uh, lead dust goes in there. 
Nice. Uh, everything else should have been sorted appropriately. Um, remember, the only things that are allowed to go into this uh, trash can here are listed in the advanced filter. If I can sneak a thing at it, there we go. So nothing else should be allowed to be destroyed by the trash can. Anything that we didn't tell it to sort, like remember I told you I have to add tin to the sorting list? Yeah. There we go. Well, I get to add tin to the sorting list now. That was the one thing that I never added to my sorting system. All right, guys, now we have an officially completed sorting system uh, because I added tin. And I'm going to back up this world so you can download it and play with it. So I hope you guys are enjoying the season so far. Uh, I did get a few comments in the videos that my houses are not looking terribly great. I know, I'm not a great builder. But I'm going to try, um, coming up, I'm thinking in the next couple episodes, I'm going to get into a couple mods that I want to start having dedicated buildings for. So I want to actually have a building somewhere off to the side, somewhere else, that I dedicate, you know, one or two mods to going into that building. And that's where I'm going to start trying to do kind of a theme. So whatever the mod is, I'm not going to let you know yet. I'm going to uh, keep that one a little bit of a secret. But whatever the mod happens to be is going to determine what the building design looks like. Um, so I will wind up um, working on that building design and hopefully making it kind of cool. Um, I'll try. I make no promises. I mean, it'll probably be somewhat square for a while but I've asked a couple of my friends who are good at building things to help me out with making them look a little nicer besides squares but at least I'll use better materials than the cobblestone which apparently was not a hit I thought it looked cool all right guys dial 20 setting off like I said hope you're enjoying the season so far world download at the end of this episode so uh, check the forum thread in the description of this video I should have the world download available there and take it easy <laughs>